technical interviews. A technical interview is an interview that you will have when you're applying to be a software developer at a company. So you're applying for the job, you submit your resume, you submit a cover letter, you get the interview. The interview you have, more often than not, is a technical interview. Where that lies in the process of recruitment and all of that doesn't really matter, but pretty much no matter what, you're going to have a technical interview. The technical interview is basically like the SATs. You get this technical question, this math problem, this computer science question that almost feels a little bit like an escape room, those sorts of principles, and you have to answer it. You have to come up with some algorithm, you have to use some data structures, and you can fail pretty bad at them. So we're going to go through some of my stories of technical interviews and uh, hopefully you learn something from them. Let me just say for one that technical interviews are not easy. So I guess we'll start with my first ever technical interview. I was applying at a company, it was like a fairly like medium sized company, but then they got acquired by a bigger company and now they're part of the conglomerate that is Microsoft. But I was applying and I was just talking, I was at this conference and I was just talking to this woman at their booth and I was like, yeah, you know, I use this platform all the time, et cetera, et cetera. And then she's like, hey, how would you want to interview for an uh, internship this summer? And I was like, okay, sure. And so I signed up for later that, it was either later that day or the next day because it was a conference, it was like a three day conference, the Grace Hopper celebration. And that happens a lot where you go up to a sponsor's booth, you show them your resume, you tell them a little bit about yourself and then you might get an interview. So I had done this and I had really no idea to what to expect because I had it, this is my first ever tech interview, it was junior year and I walked in and there's like a whiteboard on the right side and I'd read about these technical interviews of sorts but there was a literal whiteboard like in this little room where it was like a walled off type area with curtains and I met the lady and she was super nice and I was telling her a little bit about myself and then she's like okay time for the technical interview portion I was like okay and she gives me this question and I don't remember exactly what the question was but it had to do with string manipulation and I felt like I knew Java, like Java was my baby, I loved Java, I was in the process of making 30 days of code, like I knew Java in and out. Turns out I didn't. Uh, she asked this question and it was like, the problem went something like this, given the string, can you find out if the word Taylor Swift is in the string and how many times? It was something like that, which is a fairly like basic beginner problem, like should have solved it, no problem. But no, um, really what you had to do or one way of doing this problem was you use like split, which is a Java method. I was coding in Java, but basically the split method, which you can apply to strings, breaks down your string into an array and so you can basically say split on the spaces and so if you have the sentence this is a dog you'll when you run the split method on that string you'll have this in one entry of the array is in another entry a and another entry dog and another entry and etc and you can split on other things as well so say you wanted to include commas and just yeah split and make those two different words that sort of thing of course, I had no idea that this method existed, so I'm trying to iterate through this thing, no can do, and completely failed the problem because I was trying to use like indexing and arrays and oh, maybe if we find this, if we iterate through the string and you find this group of letters together, then you could do this thing, and I kind of got confused in like the nonsense and details of that. But I think it's really important for at least people starting the technical interview process is that one, you really need to know the language, and two, the interviewer wants to help you. The interviewer wants you to do well. And usually if you've gotten the interview, you've met a certain caliber, or you've met a certain like level for you to get that. And most of the time you're really close. Like it's clear that you know the language Java, or you know what's going on in the problem, ideally, but you just, you're missing one thing or you're missing one step. Now at this same conference, I had just, I think I had just gotten out of, this was back in like 2015, but I had just gotten out of the interview with this company 
and I was frazzled. I was like, oh, this isn't good. I totally didn't get it. And I didn't. That's totally correct. And I was kind of running around like, okay, I need to get more interviews. I need more practice. Like, okay, now I know about the Java slip method. Would never forget that again. So I'm running around, running around, and I start like walking up to booths and being like, hi, my name is blah, 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 and this is what I do. And I walked up to someone from Intel. And I was like, hi, you know, I'm so excited to work at your company, blah, blah, blah. And it, I said, like, the previous company that I had interviewed with's name. And we kind of look at each other for a second, and then I'm like, okay, guess we're not working at Intel. And then I walk, walked away. <laughs> and, and, you know, that's how you can know you can just completely make a fool out of yourself at some of these booths. And then, oh, you narrow down your search. Although I messed up terribly at those two companies, You'll find as, if you're looking for an internship, really if you just talk to a company, sometimes they will just hire you. So I walked up to this one banking company and I kind of, I walked up to them because I bank with them and like they're my bank and that's where I store my money. So I was like, okay, I'll talk to this bank. They're cool. I use their app to deposit checks. And so I love that computer vision, seeing the check, verifying everything. And then it's like in my account and I don't even have to visit the bank. That's great. So I walked up to this one bank. And this is still same conference back in 2015. And I walk up to the bank and I'm like, hi, how are you, blah, 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 my name's Catherine. And they're like, hi, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, why do you wanna work at this bank? Um, or work on the technology for this bank? And I was like, well, I bank with you guys, you're my bank, and I really like the, the depositing check on the phone. I like the mobile app, I use it all the time. It's great. And I go into my story of like during the summer or during the year, the college I was TAing for, they sent you a physical check. And this bank like just was not in the city that I was living in. And so it allowed me to actually use the money and deposit my checks because I couldn't go, I didn't have a car, I couldn't like drive to the bank another city over, etc. So it let me actually use the money I was making and deposit it in my account and make sure it was safe and that sort of thing. Uh, so I'm telling her the story, and then she was like, oh, great to meet you, awesome, perfect, great. And then I'm like, bye, great to meet you, you know, great to talk to you, hear what you're working on and stuff like that. And I gave her my resume. And about like a month later, I received a phone call. And I was like, hi, my name's Catherine, what's up? And the call was from this bank, or from the recruiting internship program from this bank. And they were like, congratulations, you've gotten an internship with Blank. Your interview was so great. And I was kind of like, what? Like, I didn't even interview. I just walked up to this one lady and told her what I was working on in 30 Days of Code and how I use their app and I like the app. And on the phone, she's like, it's $40 an hour. We're gonna give you a $5,000 scholarship if you accept the offer for your education. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Like, how is this happening? Like, this is my mind, of course. Like, I'm not gonna say this to this lady. And she's like, do you accept? And I was like, uh, give me some time to think about it. So then I like went and researched the program. And although like, I like the bank, I still like the app. They're, they're definitely the best bank I think exists. I ended up not going with it because I am not interested in financials or banking. I like media stuff, so. But w that is so weird, you know, you can fail. It's interesting how you can fail so hard at some interviews and then, and I, I doubt that that would have never happened. The, the banking thing would never have happened for a full-time position, but for an intern, it's an opportunity. And of course there were more interviews that happened. I started getting better at them. And the next year, I submitted, this is the same like Grace Hopper celebration, the Grace Hopper conference, big women in tech conference. I like submitted my resume to their database. And basically what they do is they let the top companies see the database of resumes and go through it and pick out certain people. Maybe they want to interview before the conference, at the conference, that sort of thing. But I had never really gotten chosen for that sort of thing, so I just kind of submitted it this year. You know, th at this point, I was looking for full-time positions. And one of the bigger tech companies pre-selected 30 resumes out of this resume bank. And they were like, hi, congratulations. You have gotten straight to on-site for this company. So you don't have to do a technical phone screen. You don't have to do anything else. 
and you can just come straight on site to California where all the big tech companies are and interview with us. Free trip, all expenses paid. Come check out our headquarters. You'll do four technical interviews in the one day and we'll see how it works out. And I was like, what? Are you kidding? Okay. Uh, and it's actually very ironic because this company wanted to interview me like in July or August of that year. I, they sent like a coding challenge. I completed the coding challenges, like a hacker rank coding challenge and did well enough. I thought I did okay on it, but I did like all the test cases didn't pass, but I did okay. And then I got the in interview for the technical phone screen and I just kind of was passing that along because I was intimidated. I didn't think I could actually work at this company. I wasn't sure if I wanted to work at this company to work at a big tech company. I wasn't sure if that was what I wanted. I also didn't want to read Cracking the Coding Interview. I was just like, you yeah, know, I'll find a job and I don't want to have to memorize that book. And now they wanted me to just come straight to on-site. I could have done the phone screens and completely failed and been completely out of the ranking for this. But they still wanted to interview me, so I was like, okay, I'll go straight. In this, I do fail. I do fail in the story. And so I go straight to on-site. This is like in September. The conference was in October. So we go straight to on-site. And it's like 30 other women that are there and I get to meet them, connect with them. So that was really cool. It was like a multi-day thing that you went out there for. They provided you like group dinners and it was like great to meet the recruiters and they were all super nice. And I go in for my four interviews and three of the interviews were great. I was like, I could totally work with you guys. I get it. I'm flowing. It's free. It's great. But, but then we have the last interview of the day. And you have to imagine, like, I don't know how you sign up to be an interviewer at this company, but this was not, this is not a good interview. Basically, she came in, didn't even ask me my name, and just started with the coding question, which I was like, okay, fine, maybe she's had a long day, she's not going to introduce herself, okay, fine. And she writes the coding question on the board. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I totally got this. And I start walking through. So the way you approach these technical interview questions is you rephrase the question to whoever's asking it. So you say, okay, so you want me to take this collection and you want me to do these things to it. So an input for this would give you this output. An input of this would give you this output. Am I understanding this correctly? And then they'll say yes or no. And then the interviewee would be like, okay, well, could these numbers be negative? Or could this string be empty? Or could you have these characters in this? Or whatever, whatever like edge cases you can think of, whatever ways you can see how the problem could be manipulated to where you could get a wrong answer. You wanna make sure you have all the information about the input that you can in order to create an algorithm that actually solves what you're looking for. If you don't know of all the possible types of input you can have, then you're gonna have an issue with your algorithm. So I'm rephrasing the problem and the interviewer completely ignores me, like doesn't even look up to say hello, doesn't even look up for anything. This person just gives one word answers, yes or no, okay, that's fine, like those sorts of words. And I'm just, I'm going through my coding, I'm like, okay, let me go through my coding question and I'm writing code on the board and I'm like, okay, this is for this case and what if we have this, then we're going to do this and I'm using this data structure and we're going to do this type of thing and we'll use this data structure as well to do this type of thing. And I'm like walking through it and this person is typing on their computer, barely paying attention to me. I'm like, it was like this person had already made up their mind about me before entering the room. And I was like, okay, maybe this person's having a bad day. So I walk up to them and I'm like, hi. <laughs> like, hello, I'm still here. <laughs> and she's like, hi. And then I'm like, what are you working on? And it was something about like financials. And I'm not going to talk about it, but it was basically a project she was working on for work. I'm like, that's great. You want to see the code I wrote like way over here? Like, let's, let's look at the code over here. Of course, I didn't say it like that, but it's like... You know, people study for months for these technical interviews and to have someone not barely pay attention, I was like, ugh. And not that it's like, I, it's not an entitled thing of like, oh, I studied for this long, I should it. But I just, I feel, you know, people, people wait years to apply to some of these bigger tech companies. They dream of working there and it was completely ignored. Finally was able to get her back on track and get the problem done, but I did end up getting an offer, but what a weird, that was a fail for a tech interview. Ugh. 
that was probably the worst experience I've ever had interviewing is where you're trying to portray your thoughts in the best possible way you're trying to make yourself look in the best possible way for this interviewer you're trying to show all of the knowledge you have and prove to them hey I actually know what I'm doing I know my stuff or at least to an extent that an undergrad should but that's that's pretty crazy Thank you so much for watching. Do you have any technical interview stories, any crazy things that have happened to you? Let me know in the comments, and I hope you learned something new in this video. Happy coding.